Through a little experimentation, I can demonstrate for you the effect of brightness on impressions, and then we'll look at a couple other things like color and texture. So the brightness of an area does have a significant effect on how your brush strokes will appear, how prominent they are. So extremes like black and white uh, and shades close to that uh, tend to lose the appearance of brush strokes but also right in the middle at 50%, sometimes the brush strokes are less apparent. So the best coverage and contrast do seem to be about 70% and 30% brightness. Um, so you might have to plan with your photograph to avoid black and white, pure black and white, and uh, keep a flatter image to start with. So let's see what I'm talking about. So let's make another test of what the brushes do, this time based on what the underlying tone is, you know, the level of darkness or lightness. So I have white on top and black right next to it, so we can see the greatest contrast and then uh, on down. And what I did was painstakingly uh, went through this column, brush one, brush two, brush three. So I select one column at a time, put it on a new layer, run it through Topaz Impression with each brush, and the brush settings I had as a preset set all the way on brush volume, large brush volume, and paint opacity to the right, and the number of brush strokes as low in order to see them as grossly as possible. Uh, of course, one can uh, redo this a number of times with different settings and see how it happens. But let's just look at what we have here. So this is on uh, just the black and white background. And as you see off to the right, I'll show you what it does with color. And if we zoom in, that's how we can see this. So I'll make this available through in here if I can figure that out. So this is uh, at 10 percent, uh, excuse me, 90 percent brightness, 80, 70, and so on. And so let's concentrate maybe on brush one at the bottom and work our way up the darknesses. And you'll see, but I, I'll, like I said, I'll make this available to you about 50 percent, so 10, 20, 30. 4050 might be the best place to judge what's going on with these different brushes. So this is brush one, and we're going to go all the way over to 17. You can see one, type one, type two, type three, type four, type five. So type two looks like it's giving very obvious brush strokes. And you can sort of define as you look in here, what kind of brush this was. This looks like somewhat rounded tip brush that may be uh, thicker and medium to large in width. This one is a little narrower in its width, but probably still uh, fairly full and somewhat pointed uh, rounded end and uh, so on. You just go through and analyze <clears throat> this one looks uh, just a very dry brush uh, that's flat and uh, skinny and thin. Uh, this one looks like an angled brush that's relatively dry and thin. This one looks like a kind of paintbrush you'd take to your, your trim on your wall when you paint your walls. And uh, here, this really gets into kind of the chalk and the charcoal pastels or whatever. Um, and these looking more like daubs. So just go through on your own and see how you think the brush that make, made these was shaped. How much paint was on them? Is there spill off at the edges? By the way, in, in the settings for this brush, I left the spill at zero, which is the midpoint. And that would be another interesting thing I may do and add to this video. Um, 
but if this is tedious to do, uh, this is your sketching uh, type brush. And uh, here these have a lot of character to them. Uh, I like using uh, some of these for watercolors and then just lowering the opacity and the, the paint volume to say 25% or so and uh, other effects. But you can see very interesting how much uh, dimension is in like the type 16. Uh, this one, uh, type 15, is uh, like for pointillism but you can stretch it out and make it more elongated. And um, as we come up to the top, you can see that the effect of those brushes uh, becomes almost like less coverage is there. And the same thing, I think, when we go into white, the, the contrast is just lacking. I mean, look at charcoal just going to uh, white here, how little texture uh, from the brushes is there. So it's a very interesting experiment. I invite you to look it over carefully. Now I'm going to shrink this back down and center it, control zero, and show you what happens with the different colors. Let me first show you how to generate one of these because I'm just going to provide the base black and white for all these um, trials and I'll show you how to do it. So in Photoshop, duplicate the layer first and then come down to adjustment layer and call it solid color here. And let's say we wanted to look at orange, choose that one and then just while this uh, layer is highlighted, uh, go to the blending mode and change it down to color. And then you can see the brush effects uh, with color. And that might help you choose uh, the effect you're going for. You know, which brush stroke looks best uh, for the color tone image that you're... Here's pink. And you can see in the black uh, that it looks very sparse, Keeps, and that's the way it's keeping the tone. Let's uh, see if we can zoom in on that. I mean, I don't even see a trace of, well, maybe a slight trace of uh, paint stroke in here, but black is definitely black. Magenta, cyan. yellow, blue, green, and red. So you can pause your video on any one of those colors and just copy it, or you could make your own. <laughs> uh, or you could <laughs> lay this uh, grid out any way you want. Uh, different brush stroke effects. Okay, so I'm going to look at just one brush and show you some experiments. Uh, this is the Type 3 brush on a low number of strokes. I've widened the column for this, again going from uh, black, uh, white and black to different percentages of uh, lightness. Um, And I'm just going to concentrate on these middle seven or eight uh, shades uh, because we see more detail in there. Really lose it at white or 90%, uh, which is down here. Um, <clears throat> so I, I want to concentrate more in these areas. Maybe we'll include that. So this is... Uh, 90% bright, uh, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. And uh, is come down, and I'm going to still keep the medium-sized brush, uh, but, you know, certainly you can play with that. 
and see what happens. Reset something to the beginning. You just double click the word. Here I'm keeping the paint volume, large brush volume and opacity up because that gives us uh, the most detail to look at. But certainly if you're doing something like a watercolor or whatever, you would uh, want to take the opacity down quite a bit uh, and the paint volume down like so. Uh, so that's one way to help get your watercolor effect. The other would be to take the smudge up and there you're seeing much more of that watercolor sort of effect. And the other way to help uh, sell watercolors is uh, to put some texture in the paper and perhaps some other texture overlays. Bring those back up and take the smudge back down to zero. And let's look at what happens with spill. So first I'll keep this same magnification and look at uh, spill. That's on zero spill and that's at max. And it doesn't shift a whole lot on this. Uh, I've seen it more with uh, some of the other things we've played at and you've seen in the past. I can zoom in so we can really see if there's a difference. Here's maximum spill and minimum spill. So like watch in here, that's minimum spill and maximum spill. So it's just as if the paint stroke is bleeding out a little bit more. And that's uh, back to the neutral setting. Uh, let's look at stroke color variation. So uh, if we put it on the maximum, somewhere in the middle, and somewhere around 10%. So remember, we started with purple, and what, what we're getting is the degree of variation from this original lilac color. So that's where your stroke variation gets to be pretty uh, modern art like okay but for something like uh, uh, impressionistic painting putting a little bit of stroke color variation is in keeping with what impressionism would often do uh, look at a monet water lily close up stroke width and length can help you uh, get a different effect of course and if you want to get something more linear you can really vary things like so. Okay. And then uh, lastly, let's look at smudge. Uh, here's at zero. And here's max. So putting Smudge, like I said, helps to sell a softer effect. And painting progress, 50%, 25%, and 20%, or 10%-ish. I'm not clear from looking at this how it's deciding on painting progress. But certainly tone seems to affect it quite a bit. And definitely this uh, 20, so this 20% uh, really is affected first. And then it seems to skip to 50. And then the 90 and the 10. Very interesting how it's sort of picking out that painting progress on the basis of the level of brightness and skipping around. 
So whatever genius kind of developed this did it on the basis of that rather than on taking out uh, uh, every other stroke at 50% or something like that. Um, not sure why, <laughs> but that's what we have to live with. So you can run through this same experiment with every brush. I'll give you the uh, this base image, uh, and then you can play with your different brushes and variations on it. Of course, the other thing uh, we have is, and I'll stick with uh, the same brush to start. Come down to my presets here and select that same test pattern, test grid. But go back to the type 3 brush. So this, remember, was low on the brush strokes. Here's medium. And here's high. So we'll zoom in and see the effect of the level of brightness. So here's 100%, that's 0%. And we really see nothing inside here at uh, 0. And see a little bit at 100%. 90% is pretty good. Here's 80%. And so on. So it's just a way to test uh, the different brush strokes, different from what we've done previously. One of the takeaways from this is that if you want to have uh, very apparent brush strokes like these, uh, that you don't want to go to uh, the extremes of adjusting your white point and black point. Uh, otherwise, you will lose the paintbrush detail. Uh, and that's significantly problematic, isn't it? So <clears throat> if we look at brightness and see if we can affect these two top levels of brightness, we can try putting more or less contrast in. More contrast versus less contrast. Lower contrast certainly helps with the white, which is 100% brightness. High contrast, I don't see doing anything for me. Uh, we could try bringing up shadows or brightness and I still don't see anything in the black. So black is not your friend in Topaz Impressions, at least when it comes to uh, this Type 3 brush. Sorry, I can't let you go without discussing a mishmash of a few other things that affect your brush strokes. Uh, color, texture, light direction, etc. Obviously, the underlying color of the photograph determines the paint color. Color can be enhanced with the HSL sliders in the color section of impression, and dramatic changes occur with light source and direction, and stroke color variation can be transformative. I created this uh, color image uh, with scattered, turned way up on color and size, and uh, I have medium to large in the background and then small to tiny 
in the foreground. And we'll just turn on impression and uh, <clears throat> look at the last few things here. First of all, note that uh, my colors, none of them are black and none of them are white. So that helps us uh, see the paint strokes throughout. Uh, we learned that in the last segment. And <clears throat> now we have this. You can see how Impression handled the small strokes versus the large strokes for the bigger areas. I think that's pretty nifty right there. Let's go in. And I said we'll look at the last few things. So um, again, you can play with things like smudge. And if we take down paint opacity and volume, get different effects. And you can see that on the large brush strokes, you get this nice diffusion going. But on the very small brush strokes, you get kind of this wild thing. So if you're trying to make something wild and crazy, a uh, high number of brush strokes or uh, small brush strokes are going to, and maybe low brush strokes with a large brush will get more blended. And what I wanted to do is come down to painting progress now that we don't have amount of near dark, near black, no black, and uh, no white, and no near white. If we take this painting progress down, we'll look at the difference. That's painting progress at 0 0.2, 15%. Fifty percent, and so we're just getting more and more strokes, and they're getting smaller. So now we're picking up the fine detail. So just like a painter <clears throat> may often start with sort of an underpainting, uh, big broad brush strokes, and then often blend them together, and then. Uh, as he progresses, he adds more and more of the detail. And at the end, perhaps the fine detail. And of course, we're only on medium strokes, but we can also make the brush size smaller. The color uh, is pretty self-explanatory. You all know that you can push the Saturation up or down. You can change the general color of all the colors or just shift one of them. And you can shift the lightness of all the colors or just one. or more. So you can play with all those in your paintings and see if you get a result that's better than what you had before. And then come down to lighting. So again, you control the brightness. Double click on the word to reset it. Contrast higher will probably bring out um, not only a difference in the general tone of one blotch versus the other, but often internally the brush strokes may become more pronounced. Uh, I find that <clears throat> precision contrast, micro contrast, and low contrast do that better. And you can exaggerate the highlights and the shadows as another way to bring even more contrast. 
But get ready for the big reveal in this next section. Let's see if light pos position changes anything here. We'll go to the complete opposite. Dramatic difference, isn't it? Let's put it straight on. So I'd say that's this is one way to really play with the paint strokes. I've played with it usually up, still in the upper part here, and just gotten some um, significant differences in my paintings. But it looks like just shifting it a bit is exaggerating uh, the, the contrast in the paint strokes. Off to the right upper parts here. Uh, let's see down here. Yeah, the right upper seems to be the most bland difference. And then as we come along the bottom, the bottom left uh, area seems to be very dramatic. Let's see about the upper left. A little brighter, but still of dramatic contrast. So a lot more contrast to the left than to the right. Uh, makes for a very interesting thing. So, you know, if you're doing um, a Van Gogh and want a lot of contrast in your paint strokes, this may be the way to change it dramatically, as with light position. Let's go for something sort of in between. And I think that really makes those paint strokes stand out. And vignette, you all know, it's a very familiar, common thing. You get to control the amount of vignette uh, as well as its size. So in impression, in, in uh, studio impression, this vignette uh, thing here is kind of the size. So if we turn down the transition, and turn up the strength of the vignette, if I bring th this all the way to the left, it's essentially no vignette. And then there's at 50, 75. And then, <clears throat> of course, roundness. It's pretty self-explanatory. and transition. So I usually shoot for about 75% or so on transition and uh, I usually keep my strength pretty reasonable like 14% or so. And then <clears throat> the size somewhere between 50 and 70. Let's briefly talk about the effect of texture. Texture has two main components. The bumpiness of the pattern, kind of the feel of the surface. Uh, that <clears throat> You can adjust the strength and detail sliders, and you can choose between the patterns and the icons, uh, such as Canvas 1 or a paper. Uh, the background choices can be either solid, like pick a color and shade, or pick the original and let the underlying photo show through where there are voids in the painting. Okay, here's one more thing to consider is texture. So we have this image that has a variety of colors and a fine uh, brush stroke so that we can see the background, which is where uh, one of the places where texture comes into play. So um, again, you know, you can choose to give texture canvas or a, a paper texture. Uh, so let's just choose Canvas 1 for the heck of it. And you have to then turn up your texture strength. Let me zoom in to show you that. Uh, so here's with the texture turned off. And here's with it turned on. And you can see the, the bumpiness 
you can change the texture size, which is hopefully obvious on your computer on your computer screen or phone. Um, and then the other thing, though, is what's in the background. So if we have a solid colored background that is more neutral in tone, we get a very different look. If we take that same one, uh, let's make it a little more gray, and we take it into the dark end. This is like uh, the 1960s poster shops down in Greenwich Village. Groovy baby. You know, <laughs> fluorescent uh, black velvet paintings or neon uh, black light posters. So you, you see you get very different effects. And if the texture is too much, just go and turn it down or choose a different texture. The other thing, if there's voids in coverage, is instead of choosing solid, choose original, and your original photo will show through wherever uh, these voids were before. And so now you get a very different look.